A notable Northwestern alum is in town this week for some major recognition from his alma mater. Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin, a graduate of Northwestern's Medill Journalism School, was awarded an honorary doctorate at Monday's commencement ceremony. I sat down with Martin and began by talking about the impact of his world-famous book series and the HBO, HBO show based off of it. We should note that he says he's not allowed to discuss future Game of Thrones shows and spinoffs in detail, and he won't answer questions about that next book. It changed my life. Um, in mostly good ways, uh, although, uh, you know, looking back, I, I wish I'd uh, stayed ahead of the books. The, the, my biggest issue there was uh, when they began that series, I had uh, four books already in print and the fifth one came out just as the f series was starting in 2011. I had a five book head start and these are gigantic books, as you know, if you've seen them. I never thought they would catch up with me, but they did. They ca caught up with me and passed me and, um, uh, you know, that made it a little strange because now, now the show was ahead of me and the show was going in uh, somewhat different directions. So I'm still working on the book, but uh, you'll see my ending when that comes out. I want to rewind. Um, you were, you know, an avid reader at a very young age. You right. used to um, save your money to buy used paperbacks. And comic books. I, I, you know, comic books were the things I cut my teeth on in the beginning there, you know. I, at a certain point in, in my childhood, I started getting a, a dollar a week allowance, and uh, of course it was a, another era, so that was 10 comic books. I had 10, 10 cent comic books that I could buy with my dollar a week allowance. And then when I started buying paperbacks, those were 35 cents. So I had to give up four comic books to, to every week to buy a paperback. But I did, because I was addicted to uh, some of that books too, yeah. And you started doing your own writing and then selling your writing. <laughs> well, in, in a matter of fashion, yes. Were dramatic readings of those writings included? It, they were, yes, because <laughs> most of my customers who were the other kids, I, I grew up in the projects of Bayonne, New Jersey. Uh, and uh, I would write, I would write these little two, three page stories, you know, handwritten on, on paper ripped from my notebook, which were mostly monster stories. We didn't use the term horror back then. They were werewolf stories and vampire stories and stories about monsters. And uh, the kids I was selling them to who were the other kids in the projects who were um, mostly younger than me, but uh, they, they weren't as good readers as me. So um, I, I read them the story when they, when they bought it. I read them and I did the werewolf howls and uh, all of that stuff. And I sold it for a nickel initially, uh, for a so I would get like six nickels, and I could buy more comic books. I could buy uh, Milky Way bars, which was my favorite candy then. And it was a good thing for a while, but then one of the kids started having nightmares because of my werewolf stories, and uh, his mother came to my mother, and my mother said, stop scaring the other kids, <laughs> so I had to stop. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Well. It worked out for you. It did. Uh, <laughs> it, it did. Yes. Obviously, later on, um, you know, you you came here to to Northwestern to attend Medill. I did. Um, was it a bit of a culture shock coming um, to the Midwest? Completely. Yeah. We never had a lot of money. My father, uh, my family, never even owned a car. Uh, I took the buses to to get anywhere, and I never went anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I w once a year we would go into New York City from Bayonne, which was about forty five minutes away by bus, and. We would see the uh, Christmas show at uh, Radio City Music Hall and eat in a horn and heart at Automat and visit Santa at uh, Macy's. That was our Christmas trip. But that was about the only time I even got into New York, which you could practically see from Bayonne. So I had certainly never been outside of New York, New Jersey. I had never been to anything beyond that. So it was a whole different, uh, a whole different world to me. In that time, obviously, you also lived through, you experienced some Chicago winters, which, you know, you get some winter in Jersey, but we like to brag about uh, ours here. Yes, I, I, I got immersed in that uh, right away my freshman year. I was in Bob Hall here on the campus, and we got hit with a snowstorm. I believe it was uh, 23 inches, 23 inches in like a day. And I remember I was, it, it started, and I was walking back from class um, to the dormitory, and the snow was coming down so heavily that I couldn't see a thing, you know. I'm, I'm following the sidewalk, and I literally couldn't see the buildings around me. I couldn't see what was ahead of me. I saw vague lights through the, through the snow, which I thought was a building, but then I would go to, oh, no, that's not my building. That's, where the hell am I? I was like being lost in a blizzard. But I, I finally found the dormitory, 
and then the snow just kept on coming and coming and I was on the first floor and it, it, it got so high it completely covered the window um, outside and then we got hit with a hard freeze so all the snow that had fallen did not melt for a couple weeks and they had to dig trenches from the door to the doors of other buildings and it was like it was like the trench system in World War I, except instead of mud, it was made of snow. You would be in this trench with the walls higher than your head, and there would be people going one direction, people going another, and you'd reach a fork where it, it met with another tunnel, and people would put up signs, you know, this way to Tech Auditorium, this way to Allison Hall, that kind of stuff. Um, it was like a whole different world for two weeks. And then, it, you know, then it got warm and all the snow melted, and a regular world return but I, I felt like I was on an arctic planet for for a while there and uh, you can tell by the way I talk about it I still remember it almost with a certain nostalgia it was kind of a cool experience as weird as it was. Did you later uh, sort of realize how that experience influenced your writing down the road? Well, I, I have stolen some of that trench stuff and all that for, uh, you know, the winters at the wall <laughs> in Game of Thrones. So I can describe some of that, some memory. Yeah, yeah you know, you file everything away. And if you're a writer, if you're a fiction writer, everything that happens to you, good, bad, you know, heartbreak, trauma, love, death, uh, and, and just little incidents like that, uh, things that what the scenery looks like, what the weather is like, um, it, it all becomes... Uh, grist for the mill and you and you draw on it maybe decades or quarter century later suddenly you're signed writing a, something that brings it to mind and you bring it out again and we'll have more of our conversation with george rr R. martin coming up including talk about some of his upcoming projects